Beloved, this is how sin grows. It starts with jealousy and then it goes to anger and then it goes to hatred and then murder. That's when it is every man for himself and God for us all. Because you do not want to be accountable for anyone. Why is that? Um, I'm a brother's keeper. So today, let's dive in and see in the first family how this scenario happened. And we are introduced to the two brothers, Cain and Abel. Hi, I'm Cecilia. Welcome to this channel. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. So the previous week we looked at the end of chapter 3 of Genesis and we saw Adam and Eve being kicked out of the Garden of Eden. This week we are looking at now after they were kicked out what happened and we'll be looking at Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 to 16 and it says, Now Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bore Cain saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground, and now you are cast from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you walk the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any... Who found him should attack him. Then Cain said, Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. In this passage, we are seeing that um, the man and the woman have already been kicked out of the Garden of Eden from the luxury and the comfort that they enjoyed in the Garden of Eden. And now they are in the world working the cast ground, which will be painful and tiresome for them and again here we are seeing the spread of sin and how deep it goes in the first family because now we are seeing the expansion of the first family with the birth of Cain and the birth of Abel. Here we are going to see the fruit of sin and how nothing good happens when man decides to put God away from him and become his own God. What is the teaching of Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 to 16? We are told Adam knew his wife and basically what that means is that they had sexual relations and she conceived and bore a son and she named him Cain uh, and she attributes this to the help of the Lord. She conceived a second time and gave birth to Abel which means breath or vapor or nothing which is like something that is perishable which in a way kind of illustrates the short life that Abel will live. And we are told that Cain was a farmer, so he worked the ground, and Abel was a shepherd, which means he kept sheep. We are not told of how often the first family would go before Lord in worship or in giving the offerings to God, but now here we are introduced to the two brothers going before God in giving their offerings. And we are told that Cain brought an offering of fruit from the ground, and Abel brought the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portion. Basically, he brought the best of the best to God. The offering of Cain was not accepted, but the offering of Abel was accepted. We are told God had regard of Abel's offering. This made Cain very angry and led to him murdering his own brother in cold blood. But before he had killed his brother, God spoke to him firstly, warning him of the sin that was crouching around him 
and the anger that he allowed in his heart. So, um, him being gracious towards him, telling him that if he does well, he will be accepted, basically gives him another chance to do well. Like God gave him a second chance that he can always go back and present another offering before God and to be accepted. And also God tells him of the sin that he's lingering around him and he tells him to take care lest the sin takes control over him or rules over him. But from what we have read, he did not take heed of the word of God. He did not pay attention to the words of God and he later ended up killing his own brother. And later on we see in verse 9, God giving Cain an opportunity to acknowledge his sin and repent, seeking forgiveness. But like his parents, he denies what he has done and shows no remorse for killing his brother. Like he says, I'm, I'm a brother's keeper. He was first asked, where is your brother? He says, I do not know. I'm, I'm a brother's keeper. So it shows his lack of remorse of what he has done, killing but God does not turn a blind eye to sin. He punishes Cain for what he has done. He is told that no longer will the ground yield its food for him. And also he is told that he will be now a vagabond, you know, a fugitive and a wanderer on the face of the earth. And Cain, um, consuming himself with self-pity, he complains to God that his punishment is too great and fears that his family will seek vengeance over him. God, in his mercy and grace, he extends his grace towards Cain by giving him a mark so that no one may be able to harm him as he wanders around the world. What do we learn from Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 to 16? With Eve attributing her conception to the Lord, this shows that humans owe their existence to God. The woman originally came from man and now man comes from woman. Both sexes are dependent on each other and both are dependent on God. We saw with Eve how she came into the world. A rib had to be taken out of Adam. But now we see for Cain and the brothers and every other human has to come out of the woman. And we see how now they are dependent both on each other and both on God. God being the author and owner of life, he is entitled to the first share of produce of plants, animals, and also men. Like we see in Exodus and with the children of Israel, how he commanded them that every firstborn would be dedicated to him. That every firstborn was to be dedicated to God. Not only the first, but the best of which a worshiper can offer to God. We are to offer our best. We can look at the book of Malachi and how God asked them, why is it that when you go to your governors, you bring the best of things, but when you come to my temple, you bring things that are blemished, things that are not worthy before the Lord. It is not true worship when you bring what you do not value before the presence of the Lord. God shows regard to those who offer their best to him. The worshiper and his offering are inseparable. God sees the depths of our heart and knows the sincerity of our giving. God is patient with us and he gives us his grace so that when we fail to worship him as we ought to, he gives us another chance to do better. We have seen that in Cain when his offering was not accepted. God comes to him and says, if you do it again, will it not be accepted? Verse 7, he says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? So he is a God that gives us chances over and over again that we are able to go before him and offer the right sacrifice and the right worship to him. We should not let anger take hold of our lives because as we have seen, it breeds hatred. And when hatred has grown, it gives birth to murder. As scripture warns us, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Sin is depicted as a threatening creature crouching outside the door. It should never be let inside of us because all it brings is destruction. As John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's the only thing that sin does. It kills, it destroys, and it steals a lot from us. Sin is a master of those who let it in their hearts. Since they fall, we are powerless over it. We are naturally inclined to submit to eat like we on ourselves are degenerate people 
it comes naturally for us to sin. That's why God wants Cain not to submit to the murderous temptation of the devil. We cannot on our own defeat sin. We cannot on our own defeat the power of sin. We need God for that. God only is the author of life. He only has the right to take life. With Cain killing his brother, he is seeking autonomy from God, just as his parents did in the Garden of Eden. He assumes divine authority over life. And this is what sin does, and the devil aims at taking God out of the picture. Now you become your own authority. Like you decide what is right and what is wrong. There is no rule that governs you. And with that, you hate someone, you're like, it is better to get rid of him the same way Cain did to his own brother. Because with sin, you will have no regard for human life. God's patience and mercy and grace is seen with him giving Cain an opportunity to repent. God does not execute his judgment there and then. He always gives us an opportunity to reflect on our actions and turn back in repentance. As Romans 2 verse 4 speaks of God's patience, forbearance and kindness. As Abel's blood cries out for vengeance in Genesis chapter 4, Christ's blood cries out for forgiveness in Hebrews 12, 24. So we see the blood of the two who were murdered innocently, how the human, one cry, the human blood cries for vengeance, but the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, cries for our forgiveness. God's grace and mercy does not exempt us from the consequences that result from sinning. Cain is condemned to be a fugitive and a wanderer and no longer be able to work the ground. Cain will be without a permanent place and security. We cannot escape the consequence that befall us when we sin. As much as we have been forgiven of our sin, it does not mean that we are able to escape the discipline of the Lord. In our fallen nature, the response we have to murder is vengeance. That's why Cain fears that his family will come to murder him. Why his family? Because at that time it was only Adam and Eve and the children. There were no other people. So it's only his family that will come for him. But God gives him a mark to protect him. We should remember as God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Remember that God is the avenger of all evil and all who do evil. And from the word of God we know that none will be able to escape the judgment of God. And how then can we apply Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 to 16? Life is given by God. Our waking up, coming in and going out is all a gift from God. Remember to be thankful for it. We have been blessed to see this day. But life is a blessing that is given to us by God. As Eve attributed her children to God, so also let us know that every child is from God and value every child given to us by God. Abortion is taking the sovereignty of God over life into our own hands. And none of us have the authority over life. It is God who gives life and it is God who takes away life. Let us not take autonomy of life from God into ourselves. Take life to be as precious as it is. Tithes and offerings are part of worship to God. Let us offer to God what is best out of our own heart knowing that the Lord looks at the heart. We are the living sacrifice to God because where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let us get rid of the sin that easily entangles us. In this context, anger. Now we know that anger breeds hatred and scripture says hatred for our brethren is the same as killing someone. First John three fifteen. Because anger typically includes a desire to damage or destroy the other person. Jesus tells his disciples in Matthew 5, 22, whoever is angry with his brother is liable to judgment. So let us examine ourselves and be vigilant lest the devil takes hold over us and sin reign in us. Learn to take your grievances to God in prayer. We are not to repay evil for evil. But evil for good, we are commanded to love our enemies and do good to those who hate us. God says he is the avenger of us who believe in him. When we indulge in sin, God will discipline us. The consequence will be given to us. He disciplines us for our good. And the word of God is profitable for correcting and reproof. We all need to be pruned and chastised 
for our wrong doing because that would bring growth because the purpose of God for us is to be made more and more like his son. So know and remember that the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the Calvary tree was for my sin and for your sin. And with his blood, there is forgiveness of sin. And with his blood, there is reconciliation with God because he appeased the wrath of God that was against us for all the evil doing and the sin that we have committed. And none can say, I have not sinned, because the word of God says, none is righteous, not even one. All of us have fall, fallen away from him. But with Jesus Christ and the sacrifice on the cross, we are able to draw closer to God and have the communion and fellowship with God that was lost at the Garden of Eden. So remember that the blood of Jesus Christ cries out for a better option for us. And with that, we have come to the end of today's study from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 16. I hope you have learned a lot from it. So take care and do not let the sin that is crouching and sneaking around you to get in your heart and take root because we see that it does not just end with one small thing. It grows and grows and grows and gets bigger and gives birth to many more things that you never thought you would ever do. So... Take care, take heed, lest devil takes control over your life. But we know that with Jesus Christ, he has overcome, and with him we will also overcome the temptations of this world. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So let your mind be saturated with what is good, what is lovely, what is pure, what is commendable. Whatever that brings and builds up, think upon those things. So God bless you until next week when we see each other again, diving into the next scripture.